YouTube Oz it going the Goat House is back predicting all eight NFL division winners for the 2024 season breaking down each division and picking a winner my final playoff and two roll predictions will be in a separate video next week get real excited for this type of content uh, let's get started the AFC East I am going with the New York Jets to win the division it is a three-way battle however with the Jets the Bills and the Dolphins pretty close to even and I'll tell you what I, I did have Buffalo winning this division all the all off season all the way up until the unfortunate Matt Milano injury. It's so close of a battle, and there's some other factors that that could be the deciding factor because the Bills with and without Milano on that defense is, I think, somewhat significant. You do around the, the, the defense of the Buffalo Bills in general. I'm not worried about their offense at all. Um, Josh Allen alone could help them. They could, could win them that division, and the Dolphins obviously have a chance as well. But durability is the concern with all three of those contenders uh, you know, AFC East champion contenders here, but I did go with the Jets. I, I love the, the how loaded this roster is, how complete it is. Maybe the most complete roster in football. Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, Brees Hall at running back, the weapons led by Garrett Wilson. Uh, the offensive line looks pretty decent on paper. Uh, again, a big question with a lot of these things is durability. And then defensively, we know how good this defense is. They can stop the run. They can stop the pass. I feel like this pass rush is going to get better as well. Young guys developing. Jermaine Johnson, Quinn and Williams, you know, stud corner, stud linebackers. If you throw us on Redick in there, if he plays, it makes the D-line even better. So uh, very well coached on defense as well. So I love the schedule as well. I look at the schedule, and I love the potential at the start. I, I have them starting 7-1, and 6-2 and two at, at the worst. Of course, they could be worse than that. I'm not expecting it, though. They can lose the first game and then still win seven of the first eight games, six or seven of the first eight games. And, of course, that's not going to decide the whole season. We saw the Buffalo Bills come back and win the division last year. But, you know, I think the only thing stopping the Jets from blowing that lead is, of course, injury or durability, which is very possible. And that, that's what makes picking the Jets to win this division pretty risky. But it's the same thing. You know, for all three of those teams, really Buffalo and Miami. Uh, but again, I was—it's t- always tough for me to change my my mind on something. Matt Milano did that for the Bills, the Dolphins. Man, if they had a little bit better of an offensive line, I'd probably pick the Dolphins to win this division. It's that close. I had, you know, so explosive on offense. How are you going to account for all those weapons? Um, secondary, love what they did with the secondary. This really got to stay healthy because the pass rush really got beat up. They lost Christian Wilkins, the offense line. You worry about, you worry about two a little bit as well. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to the Jets, the only thing that's stopping them from winning this division, in my opinion, the reason is not to pick them: durability and pass protection. How will the pass protection be? But they did add. Uh, you know, I'm not worried about the run blocking really, as long as it's healthy. But they did add some key pieces in the offense line. Best case scenario for me: AFC title game. I, you know, I, I, I'm sure there's some sort of percentage they can go to the Super Bowl. I don't know if I really could predict that. I think the best case AFC title game they can get there. I think there are better teams. They, there's a lot of them they have to get through. Of course, they can get through one or two of them. Can they get through all of them and get to that title game? And then can they stay healthy all the way through? They're a big durability concern team. Uh, I'm trusting them enough to win this division, and that's tough. Do they stay healthy all the way through in the Super Bowl? That's my worry. Worst case scenario, they finish third place behind the Bills and Dolphins, and they miss the playoffs. Uh, even if they get a little beat up, I still I don't see them finishing fourth. Uh, but if they get completely killed with injuries, uh, you know I, I guess it's somewhat possible. But there's my range: AFC title game, which is possible, best case. Uh, third place in division, very possible, and, and maybe just missing the playoffs. I think the only way they badly missed the playoffs uh, is, is injuries because I think this team's just too talented but a lot of, on the line for this coaching staff I pulled or I asked our Twitter slash X subscribers and it was actually a tie 50% voted Jets winning division 50% voted the Bills so we actually had no votes on the Dolphins which was surprising because this is this is a weird division I am very close to picking I have the Dolphins third I am very close to picking them to win again if they had a little bit better of an offensive line that can trust I would probably pick them to win because I like what they did with the defense minus losing Christian Wilkins uh, and there's just so many weapons you have to deal with uh, such a tough team to play especially early in the season in Miami especially so uh, but Josh Allen and that and that offense could do it alone you know they, they could win that division you know just because that offense so that's a tough one there for the AFC East. Let me know your predictions in the comments. The AFC North, another battle. A lot of good teams, obviously, in this division. I'm going to go with Cincinnati Bengals. 
you know, one, they're a very talented team. They got some serious talent, especially on offense. But a big part of this, and it's hard going against the Ravens and the Browns are, are stacked as well, but a big part of this is the schedule, which actually plays a big factor. The Bengals, to me, even though there's not too many differences, obviously, for the rest of the division, it's significantly easier the layout, who they play, when, uh, you know, the obviously a last place schedule. So, Really no reason this team shouldn't rack up a bunch of wins. I mean, they were somewhat competitive while completely beat up, injured last year. You know, and this is an easier schedule. So, and I I can't imagine they get that injured compared to last year, but that is a major concern, much like the, you know, much like other teams that, you know, a lot of other teams that we, you know, kind of worry about when, making the risk to pick them to win their division or going far. But uh, love the schedule, love the talent. Joe Burrow, if healthy, is one of the best in football. Jamar Chase, if healthy, one of the best in football. Obviously, they have T. Higgins out there. Offensive line's always been a problem. It's not great right now, but it has to be better than it has been in the past. I feel like it cannot get any worse. It's only climbing, just not at a rapid rate. Uh, very well coached, too. I'm a big fan of Zach Taylor. His playbook, his play calling, Lou Romo, very well, you know, very good coach on defense. Um, but yeah, the only knocks is, you know, durability. We talked about it run defense. They worry about a little bit. They could not stop the run last year. Part of it was, uh, DJ reader being out for a significant time, multiple injuries, but they lost him in free agency. Anyways, they do add Sheldon Rankins, but it, not really a, a crazy good run defender. It definitely helps, but that's the only thing. The interior defensive line, can they stop the run much better than they did last year? Because that's pretty important to, you're winning division, winning winning big football games. Like if you can't stop the runs, it's going to be a little tough. So hopefully they got a little better. And that that's kind of the, the on the field the main thing that worries me there. Uh, best case, I think they can win the Super Bowl. I think they're that talented. I mean, they were close a few years ago. If they're healthy, they, they are very capable looking at the coaching staff and look at the talent on the field, especially in the most important spots. You know, can play defense. They always play even better defense if they make the playoffs as well. Uh, and the passing game is incredible. Love the coaching staff. Uh, worst case, third place, missed the playoffs. Um, yeah, la- last year they got beat up and they finished fourth. And of course that can happen again, but the schedule being so much easier than they can be if they get completely beat up again. I'm not expecting that, but if they get a little beat up, I still think they can finish third in this division. Again, it is tough picking against the Ravens, how good they are. There's durability concerns for them as well. Last year for the Ravens, they were pretty healthy because we're used to them getting kind of beat up. Um, the offensive line took a hit this year. They also lost quite a few uh, members on the coaching staff. So that plays a part as well. I do think the Ravens will be really, really good. I think it wouldn't be a 12-win team. This Bengals schedule is so fair. It's the best schedule in all of football for a team. Um, so that was a, that was a big part. Uh, the Browns are very complete, obviously. Um, health at quarterback. They were so inconsistent, especially on defense, but the defense has potential to be a lot better. They got a little predictable last year. Steelers, I think, still a little bit of a work in progress. I think the quarterback situation, and they can compete every single week, but the quarterback situation is what kind of a work in progress. Uh, the ex-subs, uh, surprisingly, 83% of them picked the Bengals to win, so maybe they're on the same page with me and see like the schedule, and 17% picked the Ravens. So I was actually a little surprised about that with the AFC North, but we're going to have a battle. I mean, there's, a, once again, another division with three teams that have a pretty even battle t- to win this division. AFC South, not as tough as the other ones, even though I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I have the Houston Texans winning the AFC South. Very complete roster. They have elite playmakers looking at both sides of the ball. Their quarterback, C.J. Shroud, uh, you know, their, their receivers, their weapons, they add digs. They have an elite offense lineman, Laramie Tunsil, and a pretty solid offense line. They really improved over the years, obviously. And they add Joe Mixon to the group, so you do have to worry about this team on multiple phases. And defensively, playmakers like Stingley in the – Elite edge rush duo and Daniel Hunter and Will Anderson. Um, so very talented. Love the coaching staff as well. D'Amico Ryans is one of the best defensive coaches in football. You know, what could stop them? Uh, I, I'd say, you know, them being a little inexperienced, but they got that playoff experience last year, but still a little inexperienced inexperience in the young interior defensive line. You know, everything went great this offseason except for the plan for the interior defensive line. They missed out on some guys. They lost some guys. Uh, you know, Danico Autry, you uh, dealing with a suspension right now as well. So, man, D'Amico Ryans and the and how good this defense is in general, is they're so good that 
I don't think they'll be bad stopping the run, but on paper, it looks like they could struggle. But they're, I think they're going to play way better in that category than they look on paper. But you do worry. That's pretty important. Teams that have won the Super Bowl, they've had a stud up in the interior defensive line. You know, so and they're kind of missing that right now. So that's tough. Uh, best case scenario, I think they can win the Super Bowl. I think they're that talented. Uh, C.J. Shroud, where he was at just a rookie, you know, the possibility of what he can be this year, scary to think about, completely balanced, have the playmakers, have the coaching. They have everything you look for. They're just Maybe it's a little early to win the Super Bowl for them, but it's a different league these days. Worst case, uh, second in their division, wild card exit. I do not see a scenario with them finishing lower than second. Do not see a scenario with them out of the playoffs. Uh, that would be wild. Uh, but for that division, yeah, I'm the, I'm maybe it's risky of me saying this, but I, I'm pretty firm on the Jags in the top two. Actually, I didn't be better than they were last year. Maybe in the middle part of the season, they were last year. Very, very good. And then the Titans and Colts are closer to people than uh, what you think. And both could be a little sneaky, both developing quarterbacks. You kind of wonder about some questions about Anthony Richardson lately. Um, you know, Colts dealing with a little bit of injuries as well, but Steichen's such a good coach, tough to game plan. Jonathan Taylor could go crazy. You know, that could just be a tough team to stop on the ground. And the Titans, I mean, they've added some legit players throughout this roster. I love the new coaching staff they added. So those teams could be sneaky, uh, but I kind of do have them in tiers where I have the Texans at the top, the Jags, and then not too far behind. I'm not saying they're way far behind, but the Titans and the Colts there for the AFC South. In an obvious prediction for the AFC West champs, I got to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. We saw the ex-subs. They agree 100% there. Uh, and I like the Chargers, Raiders, and Broncos to follow. Chargers get an upgrade in coaching. I do worry about their interior defensive line. In terms of the Raiders, you do worry about quarterback play. Is there enough on offense? The Broncos could be a little sneaky. Um, I think the roster is still a little bit of work in progress. But uh, really, any of them can finish second. I think Chargers, Raiders, Broncos all fit, uh, battling for second, but I do put the Chargers a little bit ahead of those teams and the Raiders and the Broncos kind of in the same category. But, yeah, Chiefs got best player in football, Patrick Mahomes, elite quarterback play. That that alone does it for you, really, especially in this division, uh, which used to be a juggernaut but doesn't really feel like it anymore. Uh, but the Chiefs, they do have the juggernaut in it. Uh, and elite players across the board, Chris Jones, Trent McDuffie, Travis Kelsey, uh, you know, Joe Tooney, offensive lineman, and elite coaching as well, not just with Andy Reid, but Spagnola as well. Uh, one of the very best defensive coaches there is. And it's funny because the, the, I put weaknesses or what's stopping them for everybody, but they're so specific for the Chiefs. Like other teams had units. So this is a good thing for the Chiefs. It's just one spot, left tackle. I will say Sue and Matai looking pretty good in preseason, but um, they do have Morris kind of battling for that spot as well. And then Juwan Taylor, who can play either side. Uh, obviously an obvious starter. And then Nola Jerry Sneed, he was a star corner. Every step of the way helped them win big-time games. And uh, they're so good at coaching, developing, and having the next guy step up. They have McDuffie. You know, so will they miss him? Um, we'll see, but that, that could be the, di the slight difference. Best case, win the Super Bowl, they can definitely three-peat. Worst case, I even hesitated with making it as low as a divisional round. I almost made it made the worst case exiting in the AFC title game, uh, but the, the AFC is pretty loaded in the divisional round. Could they lose to... You know, they were, I guess, somewhat close losing the Ravens last year. I don't see that. Uh, if the Bills are fully healthy, they have Matt Milano back, sure. You know, they've had issues with Bengals in the past, even though at the end of the day they got the better of them. Um, you know, AFC's tough. So I guess it's that's the worst, worst scenario. If, like, they're a wild card exit where I'm going to be mind blown. So, uh, But really, it's could be AFC title game, Super Bowl kind of range for them. So pretty clear cut one. There, we'll see the battle. We'll see if another team could sneak into that wild card spot. Maybe some people think because Harbaugh, uh, you know, him elevating the Chargers because how bad of a coaching staff it was in the past, and they have such a good quarterback. Maybe they could be a little sneaky. I mean, the roster between receivers and tier to lines is a little bit work in progress. The Raiders feel like they're a quarterback away. Maybe if, if Bo Nix plays like he did in preseason, tough to say that, but uh, then the Broncos could be very sneaky because the rest of the offense looks pretty decent. Um, defense, playmaking defense could be a little inconsistent. We will see, but there are my AFC West predictions. On to the NFC East, uh, two-way battle, I'll say, between the Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys at the top. Uh, I'm going to go with the Eagles. I predicted the Cowboys to win last year. I predicted the Eagles to win the year before. I'm going back to the Eagles this year, so we'll see if we continue that streak. Uh, and then the Commanders and the Giants are kind of, people kind of put them in a tier together, a little bit more confidence. Uh, 
more complete, I guess I'll say, in the roster of the Commanders right now over the Giants, but pretty close. It kind of depends on what Daniel Jones shows up and how consistent will Jaden Daniels be. But I'll go with the Eagles winning this division. The Cowboys possibly got worse on paper. It doesn't necessarily mean they got worse, but it does definitely feel like the Eagles got better. But it is risky, even though we actually had 100% of the Twitter subscribers pick the Eagles. was surprised about that. Uh, it does feel risky because how bad they were. They were not a play. They were a playoff team, but they did not feel like a playoff team. I, I can't imagine they continue where they left off, but I guess it's possible. You know, with that, especially with that defense, maybe. Uh, but they have a loaded roster. I mean, Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, one of the very best offensive lines in football. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, defense. Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, uh, Br- Bryce Huff. I mean, they, they got ball players. Maybe they got a little better in terms of linebacker. They should have got better in terms of secondary. But it is a bunch of younger guys. They do get CJ Gardner Johnson back. Uh, they're a tough game plan. You know, mainly looking at their offense. Like you have to worry about Hurts keeping the ball, him running. Um, you have to worry about them just out physically. You just pounded the Barkley, a little misdirection. Who keeps it hurts Barkley. They can throw it to Barkley. They can air the ball downfield. It's a tricky game plan, and you have to focus so much on what they do in crazy, like, situational tush push, for an example. Like, you have to focus so much. Like, this is what we're going to do to stop this one thing. It's just, like, so much going on that you can't really focus on one thing. So that's probably my favorite thing about the Eagles. Um, and you know, they got better. We talked about Barkley and other pieces. Pass defense could stop them if it it has to be better than it was last year. But there are some young guys, so could there be some hiccups? Um, could it's they were allowing easy separation, early separation at the end of last year. So I, again, I can't imagine it being as bad as it was. But could it be still a work in progress and holding back? And in coaching, I put a question mark because Sirianni was known as a good coach until last year, and some people had some questions like, does he have control of this team? Uh, but I mainly am talking about, not really worried about Sirianni, but I guess a little bit of a question, but I am mainly talking about the coordinators. Uh, once they lost Steichen and Gannon, they they really missed those guys, and it showed so much. But the coordinators last year were pretty bad. I, I predict that they're a step up with Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio this year, uh, but are they just kind of lost without their original coordinators? Like, are, are were those guys making the team that much better? So another kind of a question there. Best case, make the Super Bowl. I almost went make the NFC title game, but because I, I don't know if I would pick them to beat the Niners, the Packers, the Lions. And maybe I would. The Falcons are tough as well. Um, you know, even if they're home against the Rams in the playoffs, that's, that's you know, other teams have a little more experience and what the Eagles showed last year makes it a little tough. So I almost put best case making the NFC title game, uh, but the roster is so good. There's such a tough game plan. If they can get that one seed, have home field advantage. I think that's a huge case for them to make the Super Bowl. I think it's possible. So I, I I'm not going to predict them to win the Super Bowl though. I, I think, and I, there's a percentage that they could, of course. I'm not saying 0%, but my ceiling for them is making the Super Bowl. Worst case scenario, second place in the division behind the Cowboys, and then a wild card exit similar to last year. The, the, even if they're disappointing on defense, again, their team is too talented to not make the playoffs. I know there's some up-and-coming teams, kind of sneaky, but just too talented. So um, they're not going to finish lower than second. That would be a shocker. Uh, but I got them winning, beating out the Cowboys this year, and there is your range for the uh, Eagles in the NFC East. The NFC North, much like the NFC East, we have a two-way battle for the top. Of course, the Bears could be a little sneaky. They might be tough to deal with. Uh, but the Packers versus the Lions. The Lions were so dominant last year. I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers, a feeling of mine, but it's pretty close to 50-50. Uh, maybe I like the Packers' schedule slightly better. But they're you look at that last year, they got better and better and better in the playoffs, how good they got. But they outplayed the Niners in their game. The Lions outplayed the Niners in a half, and they got outplayed in the second half. Um, you know, so the Packers just squeaked by that game. I uh, think they're a pretty good matchup for the Chiefs. Uh, but they have a rising, complete, balanced, talented roster. That's what I love about the Packers. They have a quarterback in Jordan Love who's a rising star. Josh Jacobs with that system. And they have Marshawn Lloyd, A.J. Dillon. That's going to be pretty scary. Offensive line looked really good down the stretch last year. They add Jordan Morgan to the mix. So love that. Uh, and then defensively, they have pass rushers. Could Van Ness as a rotation guy step up? Carl Brooks, another sneaky one from last year's draft. They have Kenny Clark on the interior. Uh, Rashawn Gary's a star on the outside. Uh, linebackers, young linebackers, that should help kind of get better, uh, continue to get better. Secondary looks pretty damn good, led by Jair Alexander and Xavier McKinney. Uh, and I say elite coaching, and that might be a bold take, but Matt LaFleur, I'm a huge Matt LaFleur fan. This guy 
knows how to coach. He knows how to call plays. But number one, number one, he knows how to game plan and prepare. We see it when he gets to the playoffs. Uh, the other coaching staff just seems to be out coached, out matched. Lafleur did that in uh, all the playoff games last year for sure. Even the one that they that they lost. Um, so I think he's a phenomenal coach, phenomenal offense coach. And Jeff Halfley is a to be determined. I love the hire. I think it's perfect. I like his experience, his background. He's a really good defensive mind at Boston College. It just and he got out because where college football is heading. If you're Boston College, you have no chance. No matter who your coach is, you got no chance because where college football is at right now. Um, so couldn't really recruit there. I guess that's not a knock for having an NFL job. Uh, I like the Niners in college background. He's a good defensive mind. In uh, a good improvement from what they had last year. So I am really excited about that coaching staff. Um, maybe some knocks with stopping them, why the Lions would win the division. They're pretty young. It's still new. Like, remember the first half of last year, they were kind of bad, and Love was kind of bad. Like, I, I guess there could be moments like that, I suppose, and they could be a little inconsistent. Maybe that stuff comes back up. I, I, I hope not. I don't think so, but um, it's a possibility. And then run defense has been Pretty consistently bad. I do think it steps up this year, but it is kind of Kenny Clark carrying the inside. But they got some young guys that can really step up. Wyatt Brooks can kind of help them, if he's, even though he's more of a pass rusher, defensive lineman. Uh, the linebackers, uh, you know, Quay Walker's young, getting better. Edrin Cooper, you know, how, how good, how consistent the run game will he be right away? So that. That's kind of the question with them. It's not a major red flag for me. Uh, best case scenario, I think they can win the Super Bowl. I, I like this roster that much. Um, you know, Maybe you would love for them to get more experience, but they looked so experienced and ready for the playoffs last year. Uh, they have the coaching staff that's experienced. Worst case scenario, second place behind the Lions and wild card exit. Um, I almost put divisional round exit, but I, I, I popped up again that would have, because we didn't see a ton of love or a ton of this team being great. It was... Honestly, a small sample size. They 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 went on a tear at the end. It looked really good in the playoffs. I mean, even when they started to win again, they they struggled against a team like the Panthers, uh, the Giants down the stretch. So that kind of I'm pretty high on the Packers this year, and it kind of makes me a little scared. Like, what if some of that pops up again? Um, you know, so I, I I think this team's too damn good to miss the playoffs. I don't see them finish. Even though the Bears can be sneaky, I don't see them finishing underneath the Bears. Um, second place wild card exit seems like the floor for me. I almost wanted to go divisional round because I think highly of this team. And I was surprised by the Twitter subs. Uh, I thought I was, I mean, I don't think it's bold picking the Packers, but I thought people viewed it as pretty bold. Uh, I feel like most people out there picked the Lions, but Twitter subs, uh, 67% picked the Packers, 33% picked the Lions. Uh, and the Lions most definitely capable of not only winning the North, but doing much more. They have the quarterback. They have the best offense line of football. They have a dominant running game. Uh, they have receivers led by St. Brown, excuse me. Um, defense is only getting better because the young developing team, they loaded up in the secondary. The Lions on paper are better than they were last year, and they keep developing and making new guys. So um, this is a to me, it's a juggernaut battle here. I think these are juggernauts of the NFC. I really do. It's not just the same old, you know, teams. You know, there's more in the NFC going on right now. Um, so that's that's a t it's a tough one. It's clo like I said, it's close to 50-50 for me. I was surprised by the ex subs uh, votes on the NFC North. NFC South, I went with the Falcons. I think most people are. Even though the Bucks got better and better last year, they they uh, won the division easily. You know, no, I shouldn't say easily, but down the stretch, they were clear cut best in the, in the NFC South, and they win a playoff game. And that, man, they put up a fight with the Lions for a little bit in that game. I, you know, things didn't really go their way that that well. They they put up a little bit of a fight, so we can't really rule out the Bucks. Uh, but I think losing Canales is pretty tough. And the Falcons are just so good on paper. They've added so much with the coaching staff and on the roster. Very complete roster. They have a quarterback. Even if Cousins goes down, they have a quarterback that I know it's a rookie, but Penix should be able to do some damage. Very solid offensive line. Man, it's the best offensive line Kirk Cousins has ever had, too. Think about that. Running game with Bijan. Receivers led by Drake London, but they have multiple defense. They had Matthew Judon. They have interior. They have... Uh, a crazy secondary with Jesse Bates, AJ Terrell, now Justin Simmons as well. I uh, like the schedule, and the division kind of plays a part on that. You know, you think you could split with the Bucks, Man, I, I think it's a disappointment. If they, It's tough to do, even if the teams aren't the greatest, but I, I think people are expecting a 4-0. Uh, you know, Saints and Panthers, maybe 3-1 and one if you combine those teams. Uh, I mean, they, they could honestly sweep their whole division. It's possible. 
Um, very tough to do, but so I do in the favor. The schedule's pretty favorable, not quite Bengals level, but I like it. Um, what's stopping them? Maybe the chemistry because they got the new coaches, new quarterback that's so used to that Viking system, and these young players that get these guys thrown at them. And defensively, they add Matthew Judon. Um, you know, they, they add Justin Simmons. How is two free safeties going to work? Uh, not really worried about it because it's a uh, mostly going to be a cover four scheme. So they're really isn't a true free or strong. It's basically two frees out there. How they be against a run with something like that? Not overly worried. Um, durability, a little bit of a question mark because it's not like the Jets or uh, the Bengals. It's not on that level, for an example. But Cousins was hurt last year. He was known as maybe the most durable durable guy in football with the hits he took. Uh, but you do have to question it. And Penix, you know, if he has to play, maybe some durability concerns. Drake London, Bijan Robinson, guys that had injuries, you know, way in the past. Um, you know, nothing major there. Defensively, Matthew Judon, Terrell's dealt with little things here and there. Um, you know, so there are pretty important spots, but it's not a major, major concern. So this team is pretty easy to predict. It's like there's not super negatives. Um, it does kind of feel like they have a little bit of a ceiling. I think on paper, if you just evaluate this roster with no other factors, just look at the roster on paper, it feels like a Super Bowl team, but it's all so new. Uh, I believe in Kirk Cousins, but is he a Super Bowl winning quarterback? I guess that'll be a question. You know, do they stay healthy at that point? I think NFC title game this year might be their ceiling. I think next year, I think they can be legit, legit Super Bowl contenders, legit, uh, but May, put a percentage on it. They can make the Super Bowl next, uh, this year. Worst case, wild card exit. I don't see where they don't make the playoffs. Like I, if if Kirk Cousins went down right now, not going to happen. Knock on wood if you're with me. Uh, knocking on some wood here. Don't worry. But if he went down today, right now, and Penix had to play, I'd, I'd pick them to win it still. I think that roster's that good. Win the division still. They're not nearly as good with, as, compared to with, with them with Cousins, but it'd be a lot tougher. But I think that roster is that good. I like the coaching staff as well. Um, and then Twitter subs agree 100% on the Falcons. So there it is for the NFC South. In the NFC West, I went with the San Francisco 49ers. Fun story right up here. Uh, the graphics guy went ahead and used that font for the other divisions and then realized that you, there was no uh, numbers in this font. So I had to go San Francisco Niners. It works. Uh, but complete roster. I mean, who's going to be out there, though, dealing with Brandon Ayuk's situation still, still untraded, Trent Williams? I'm going to guess they're both out there. Well, Trent Williams definitely, but we'll see. Um, super complete roster. You could argue the most complete in football. Um, talent everywhere. Uh, great coach in Shanahan. Obviously has to get over that hump, but a great coach. Uh, just consistently win football games and improving quarterback on top of having something – that's the thing about the Niners, like something that's kind of held them back in the past, like quarterback play. But Purdy got so much better last year and then could get even better this year. It's easily possible. But elite talent everywhere. And I like the experience. Like they, they've been in this show before. They've been on this rodeo before. Um, you know, so they're, they're, they're always ready. They're always ready. They could beat anybody. Um, what's stopping them? Offensive line, even though they have the best in football and there's some other guys that should step up. Um, you know, Pooney looking pretty good in preseason, but it was – I don't think it'll be a ba as bad as it was last year, but I don't. I don't think people realize that it wasn't good at the end of last year, and they made it that far with the struggles that they had, and it was kind of a reason they they lost in overtime. But it could hold them back again. You know, Trent Williams not getting any younger. If he's out there, could he get injured at any time? We, that's definitely a possibility. Durability pops up. They were fairly healthy last year, but we're just you know for for the Niners, you know, because uh, for the Niners, it's we're kind of used to them just being completely beat up, you know, so at the end of their run the year before and in the past years, it's like every guy's getting hurt. So it's still a little bit of a question for them. Best case, Super Bowl champs, they definitely can win the Super Bowl. It's pretty obvious. Worst case, divisional round exit, um, you know, because they can, uh, you know, if they're matched, they can be matched up with anybody like the Lions, Packers, uh, Eagles. They could, of course, they can lose to one of those teams. Most of those teams, I think I would predict them to beat. Maybe not all. We'll see. My final playoff and Super Bowl predictions next week. Can't wait for that. Uh, X subs, we saw 83% Niners and 17% picked the Rams. Uh, a little surprising, but I do like the Rams. Matthew Stafford played out of his mind last year. He can continue off that. They have a really good running game. They improved the offensive line, which was kind of the issue. They have receivers. Defensively, no Aaron Donald, but they actually patched up some spots. Uh, so a lot of young rising players. So Seahawks and Cardinals are both can be pretty sneaky. I love the new coaching. 
uh, for, for Seattle. Defense should really improve, and the offensive system could be tough to game plan for. Cardinals get Kyler Murray, who's a great, who's a great quarterback. They get him all year, you know. Hopefully, as long as he's healthy, but they get him from the start. Unlike last year, they had Marvin Harrison Jr. I think Gannon's a really good defensive coach. Ajilari injury is tough. Uh, they're still a little bit of work in progress in the front seven on that defense, so that maybe is a slight difference, putting them slightly behind Seattle for me. But uh, there you have it. There are my predictions for every single division. Let me know your predictions, your thoughts in the comments. Again, final predictions coming uh, as we wrap up the rest of the preseason here. Uh, a lot of trade videos on the channel and more to come. Important links pinned in the comments. Check them out. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.